saviors of the helpless. Hope of those who have lost all hope. Refuge for the homeless. Honor of those who have been dishonored, a traditional praise for the Khalsa. Sharanjit Singh. My parents were very much hurt by the attack on the Golden Temple. My father commented that he had four sons, and that even if one of them should get sacrificed for the nation, he would be proud that his family had contributed something. He said clearly that nobody guilty of any crime should be spared. But he also felt that at no cost should any innocent be killed. I decided to become involved in the freedom movement, and my house became a place of shelter for the guerrilla fighters. We gave them food, clothing, and so on and I started becoming more firm in my daily routines, especially with regard to my faith. I used to recite prayers morning and evening, and became convinced that it was through meditation, that we can get Shakti or power. The freedom fighters who used to come and stay at our home were very devout, too. One of them used to spend 20 hours a day in prayer. He never slept during the night, but we would hear him doing prayers. The first major action in which I was involved, occurred when I got a message from Manbir Singh Shehiru, General of the Khalistan Commando Force. It said, Singh, we need your services to get General Lob Singh released from police custody. I replied that my body, mind, and soul belonged to the Sikh nation, and I was ready for anything. I then became part of the party of Bhai Manbir Singh Shehiru, which got General Lob Singh, Bhai Sawaranjit Singh, and Gurinder Singh Bowler, released from Jalandhar police custody, with the resultant deaths of eight police personnel. We had a Maruti car, a jeep, and a truck with us. We all met at Suchi village on the outskirts of the Jalandhar bypass, and each was given a different duty to perform, when we reached the Jalandhar courts. The plan was that the three Singhs, the prisoners, were at a given time to sit as if relieving themselves, for in that posture, the police who were handcuffing them would have to be at their backs, and wouldn't be able to see the other side. The three were to say at the agreed upon time that they were getting nature's call. In our planning we made it a point to ensure that those police personnel should not get killed. Our plan was not to kill them, but simply to ask for hands up. Only if they did not obey were we to shoot them down. When the confrontation occurred, by Manbir Singh Shehiru was standing with his back towards the jeep, holding a Thompson gun. By Satnam Singh Adilgar had a .455 revolver, and I also had a .455 revolver, and one Singh was holding a Sten gun. When the police refused to raise their hands, we went ahead and shot them down. As it happened, 1.455 bullet also hit the hand of General Lob Singh. As we were getting the prisoners out of that place, by Manbir Singh Shehiru continued to fire one bullet at the window and one at the door, so that the police still inside would not dare to come out. We managed to get the three of them into the jeep, but then there was something wrong with the starter. Luckily, we had planned to have a car on the other side of the road, since there was a railway crossing nearby, and we had feared being held up in our escape if there was a train. When we dashed across the railway the bridge was in fact closed, but by Manbir Singh Shehiru flourished his revolver, and the attendants opened it right up. I should tell you that in the whole plan, there had been one police boy inside who had helped us. He had instructed us that one particular person was sympathetic to the cause, and should not be killed in the escape action. But what happened was that when the shooting started and the police personnel started falling down, one dropped his Sten gun. That person who was supposed to be sympathetic reached to pick it up, so we didn't take a chance to spare him. We had to shoot him down too. Eventually, we reached District Hashiarpur, and we broke the handcuffs that were still on the hands of the prisoners. This was how General Lob Singh got released and I became a full-fledged militant. In my organization I was considered an expert in the repair of weapons. We had a licensed gun in our home, and from childhood I had been fond of hunting. I used to go to the hills to hunt and not come back for days at a time. That's how I first learned how to handle weapons. One time, a comrade and I were riding on a scooter along Padla Road, when we noticed that two policemen were following us with AK-47s. We only had two revolvers, 
so we threw the scooter down and took up positions on the ground. My knee was dislocated in that fall, but my friend grabbed my shoulder and helped me along. I told my friend that he should go on and save himself while I engaged the police, since I couldn't run anywhere because of my knee. He did that, and there was an exchange of fire with the police, during which I got a bullet in my leg. In the middle of this two people came up riding on a scooter and I pointed my pistol at them, and told them to give me the scooter. As the police were on the other side of the road, I crept along the ground hugging that scooter and broke through a fence along the side of the road. I drove the scooter away at full speed through some fields, and finally ditched it in a pond. I managed to get to a physician who was trained in indigenous healing methods, and he gave me something that was supposed to prevent infection. Not wanting to risk going to another doctor, I eventually took a scissor and cut the bullet out myself, with my own hands. In Sikhism, Bhakti and Shakti, spiritual and temporal power, go together. If we have complete faith in Guru, there is nothing like fear that can come to our minds. Even when those police were shouting at me to surrender my weapon, I stood up and told them they could shoot me down, but I would never give up. I also carried cyanide with me all the time, so that I would never fall into their hands alive. Another time I had a close encounter when my wife and I were coming from Jammu in a truck, and we were stopped at a check post on suspicion. Two police decided to take us to the police station in our truck. On the way, I told the driver to stop at a gas station because we needed gas. The driver got down and one of the policemen got down too, and I quietly indicated to my driver to get in and give a sudden start to the truck. He did this and the policeman who had gotten down, was thrown off to the side. We caught hold of the other officer inside and gave him a good bashing, then threw him off the truck. As it happened, he fell on the road and the truck ran over him. He died on the spot. Then my wife and me abandoned that truck and ran through the fields to some safe place. My wife was always supportive of me like this. The bond between a husband and wife is strong, but so is the bond between brothers in struggle. As I told you, when I got hurt in my knee, I forced my friend to leave me so that he could be saved. You could say we loved each other more than brothers, because we were together all the time, 24 hours a day, and our lives were in each other's hands. So when a Sikh falls martyr, it is not only a feeling of pain which comes, but also a feeling of revenge, because someone about whom you feel so sentimental has been killed. One time my comrade Sat Nam Singh Adilgar, who had planned the action that got General Lop Singh released, was detained in Ambala jail. He sent me a message saying that he thought the police were planning to kill him in a fake encounter. If I could make arrangements to get him released, that would be okay, he said. At that time I was wanted myself, and I didn't have much ammunition either. But still I managed to reach Mbala, and under another name I had a brief meeting with him. Don't worry, I assured him. Before your next appearance in court we will somehow get you released. His reappearance in court was on April 12th, and we scheduled a meeting with him on April 10th. We planned to get him out on that day. There were three of us involved, and we reached this very risky place at the appropriate time. We had one AK-47 but only seven rounds of ammunition were left, one Sten gun which, however, was not working, 1.32 bore revolver, and one grenade. When we tried to physically snatch our friend from the clutches of the police, one came behind me and held me. For the others it would have been easy to escape, leaving me behind. If we hadn't loved each other so much, they would have done that. But they didn't leave me, and one boy who had gone some distance in fact came back and shot the Central Reserve Police Force Commando behind me with his revolver. We jumped into a Maruti van and made good our escape. When we had covered a little distance the tire of the Maruti got punctured. We all started reciting Guru Bani, and with that punctured tire we drove on for five or six miles. Then we abandoned the van and with our pistol managed to snatch another vehicle. We finally reached Fathegar Sahib in Punjab, the others dispersed, and Sat Nam Singh Adilgar and me went home on a scooter. Later, when I came to a leadership position, 
I made it mandatory that every boy who joins the force should be able to recite prayers by heart, without even looking at the scripture. I never had anybody fight for me who was not a devout Sikh. That was my first condition. We should not do anything wrong, we should only do what is right for our nation. Sometimes it is very hard, but we have to punish somebody who was at one time part of our movement. If somebody becomes very close to it, knows all our secrets and all, and then he becomes an informant or starts indulging in robberies or something, with a heavy heart we have to take care of that. But Satnam Singh Adilgar was a man of very high values, and he taught me to never do something like this without thoroughly investigating the whole background, and finding out for sure that somebody is guilty. Only then was he punished with death. We never plan to involve any innocent people in our actions. Sometimes they might get caught in crossfire, but it is never our intention to kill them. Most of the people understand this. Though we may be reciting Guru Bani day and night, if we kill any innocent person on purpose, we will be punished for that under God's law. There will be no forgiveness for this, no matter how much recitation we do. No one working with me ever took one rupee from the people. That is why, although people are quiet because of police repression, they have a lot of love inside, and when things are safe they will stand up once again. People usually come through for us when we need them. For example, just a few days before I left India, I had an encounter with police in which three officers were killed. Many villagers had seen me walking through the district and they knew who I was, but when interrogators came there to make inquiries, not one of them named me. After I left India, my wife was picked up by police. She embraced martyrdom while in custody. Even if one of them should get sacrificed for the nation, he would be proud that his family had contributed something. He said clearly that nobody guilty of any crime should be spared. But he also felt that at no cost should any innocent be killed. I decided to become involved in the freedom movement, and my house became a place of shelter for the guerrilla fighters. We gave them food, clothing, and so I was ready for anything. I then became part of the party of Bhai Manbir Singh Shehiru, which got General Lop Singh, Bhai Sawaranjit Singh, and Gurinder Singh Bowler, released from Jalandhar police custody, with the resultant deaths of eight police personnel. We had a Maruti car, a jeep, and a truck with us. We all met at Suchi village on the outskirts of the Jalandhar. And I started becoming more firm in my daily routines, especially with regard to my faith. I used to recite prayers morning and evening, and became convinced that it was through meditation, that we can get Shakti or power. The freedom fighters who used to come and stay at our home were very devout, too. One of them used to spend 20 hours a day in prayer. He ne Saviors of the helpless. Hope of those who have lost all hope. Refuge for the homeless. Honor of those who have been dishonored, a traditional praise for the Khalsa. Sharanjit Singh My parents were very much hurt by the attack on the Golden Temple. My father commented that he had four sons, and that ever slept during the night, but we would hear him doing prayers. The first major action in which I was involved, occurred when I got a message from Manbir Singh Shehiru, General of the Khalistan Commando Force. It said, Singh, we need your services to get General Lob Singh released from police custody. I replied that my body, mind, and soul belonged to the Sikh nation, and 